So we're up super early. It's almost six o'clock. We're ready to go. This should be a really good sail, and the sail's 22 miles today, so we're only going up to an island, so it's probably blowing more than 20 to 25 out there. And there's probably gonna be some big swells, so we'll see how Ragnar and Maria do. <laughs> <laughs> First casualty. Shame. Shame. Oh, oh. I got a bra, bra just in case she goes over. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work, but the bra is fly off. I love the smell of puke. <laughs> <laughs> I love the smell of puke in the morning. Damn good sailor right there. <laughs> So just like that, we're here. What led us to this anchorage? Oh, uh, Torpedino, the little torpedo. Introduce us. So Felipe got us in touch with Torpedino. This name has an awesome story. Torpedino's dad was really into boats. In fact, when he was a boy, his dad built and launched a new boat in Recife. Unfortunately, on the first outing, the boat lost control and rammed at full speed into another boat putting the hole on the side. Brazilians have an awesome sense of humor and love nicknames. So his dad became known as the Torpedo and his son became known as Torpedinho or the Little Torpedo. And he's been helping us. He invited us into the Cabanga Yacht Club here in Recife. And he is starting a marina up this little river. And the river kind of surrounds an island called Itamaraca. And the entrance to this river is made by shifting sandbanks, so it's quite tricky to get into. We're down to two meters under the keel, two meters. Ew. You know, we draw 2.1 meters, and at low water, I think there's a, a 1.9 meter spot out here. There's two schools of thought when entering shallow water. One says to enter on a rising tide, so if you get stuck, it's not long before you'll be lifted off again. But if entering a shallow channel, this means that a flooding current can push you further aground, which means you're really stuck. In this case, I prefer to slowly feel my way just as the tide turns to ebb and slightly against you. If you run aground, the ebbing current can actually help push you back into deeper water. It's definitely a calculated risk. It's a very shallow spot coming into this river. See this area over here? Shallow. One meter into the keel. Oh, can't see anything. Oh! There's bottom right there. <gasps> they say there's two types of sailors. Those that have run aground and those that will. At some point, if you venture into enough poorly charted places, it's bound to happen. In this case, the GPS track given to us was off due to the shifting sand at the river entrance, and we were stuck Real good. Got full reverse rub. Yeah. That's not a nice feeling. No, that's not good at all. To make matters worse, the running swell was lifting us up and slamming us back down, causing a sickening shudder as she smacked her keel on the ground. But Dallas has a strong, wide keel and is designed to hold her weight. It's the lifting up and smashing down that can cause damage. Aaron, can you go unlock the bell thruster? We ran Delos hard aground a few years back on the Solomon Islands and got off by using the swell to our advantage. Oh no! We are pretty stuck. Not good. Okay, we're trying to pivot us around. 
Oh, look at all this. Ah! Oh, that's a very strange feeling. Oh, there you go, man. Every time a slow comes, we get a bit further. Our plan was to use a combination of engine and the bow thruster to pivot us around. Each time a swell hit, we moved a few more degrees until the bow was into the swell. Come on, baby. All right, we're more than halfway turned around right now. Ah. Well, we're facing the right way. I mean, we're facing into the swell. Now we just have to hopefully bounce off the bottom with each swell. I think we have to go like at least a boat length for us to be able to get out. Then I engaged the turbo at maximum RPM and we sat there, making a tiny amount of progress as each swell picked us up and the current helped to push us out again. Ooh, I think we'll be able to do it. I don't know. Are we moving at all, Brian? Yes, I think so. I think we are. Yeah. Just slowly, slowly. Everybody just hang on in case we hit. Come on, Dello, suck it in. Suck it in, big girl. Better. Yeah, we got a meter under us now. We're out. Well, what's the plan? We have three hours to low. Probably gonna drop another meter, and then it'll start coming up again. So we'll probably be anchored until like 3 p.m. or something. It's not gonna be good for Maria's seasickness sitting here in the rolls. It's like a worst, and we can see land right there. It's torture. She's probably thinking, what did I get myself into? Ugh. We still cannot go in for at least another few hours, probably. So everyone's just laid up. There's the captain. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. And uh, now we're gonna try and send the dinghy in before us. Hopefully the tide's up enough now. Okay, copy that. So the least depth that you saw was 3.7 meters and that was at mark three, right? Yes, sir, it was halfway between mark three and mark four. Okay, and that's where we ran aground before. So uh, we should have a meter under us this time. Yes, sir. Okay, we're proceeding slowly. It's just the bar, it's the shallowest part. Okay, we're past our spot before. That's exciting. Welcome. Good morning. I don't know exactly what time it is. It's probably about 5.30 or so. What a cool little place in the world to wake up. <laughs> so random. I'm really happy to be here right now. Here's to a good day. All right, so we're all situated in our nice little anchorage here. Torpedino's place is right over there. I'm gonna go over and say hi. Torpedino! Hello! Hello, man. How are Welcome you? Welcome to Angra da Ilha. Thank you, bro. So this is your place, huh? Yeah. It's cool. So your plans are to create like what, a little marina, yacht club? Torpedino is a lover of all things boats and cruising. He bought this property as an escape from the big city of Recife, and for the last few years, has worked to turn it into what it is today. As a sailor himself, his goal is to give cruisers traveling the coast a cozy and safe place to anchor, relax, and explore the surrounding area. Look at how nice this is, it's like a little resort. <laughs> We think he pretty much nailed Dulles' list of requirements for a sweet cruiser land base. Requirement number one, a solid anchorage. Dulles is really happy right there. Good, comfortable anchorage. What are we doing today, boys? We're setting up camp. And we've got a lot of stuff to bring in. How's the workday going, Blue? Pretty good. I happened to ask if they had cold beer and he just walked me into this room. 
open this fridge. Whoa! More coconuts, more beer, more coconuts. <laughs> awesome. What a good guy. What do you think, Kaza? It's really cool. I feel like a rich house vibe. <laughs> rich house vibe. Check this out. Uh, toilets. Hot showers. Super clean, brand new. That's nice. And then you have coconut trees. Plenty of agua de coco. What do you think about that fresh mm -hmm. agua de coco? It's pretty good, huh? Delicious. <laughs> what do you have, Bri? It's like mangoes all over the place. Oh. This is like a dream. I put it back to Perfect grow more. mangoes. Oh my gosh. This is one strong perk of land, I will say. Yeah. You can grow all your own food. <laughs> and I want to grow all my own food. Imagine that. You could just walk around your yard and eat breakfast. Okay, I try one. It's like a mixture between a grape and an olive. Yeah. Holy mango. That is amazing. Yeah. I've never seen something like these. Oh my gosh. Now it's crepioca time. This is like a gourmet, gourmet kitchen. Yeah, look at that. Good. Doesn't get much better than that. No. Senior Brady, what is on the menu? This night. Oh, man, we've got, I've never cooked in a kitchen this big. Maybe like a hand, maybe five times in my life I've had this room to cook. It's incredible. But tonight we're gonna do Torpedino Brady cheeseburgers. Whoa. It's like a dream come true. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many flavors. Look what we found, jujuba. And there's nothing cooler than a sailing dinghy. So I think I'm gonna drag it out and try and give Ragnar Maria some sailing lessons. Should be cool. You always wanna be like if the wind is coming over the side of the boat. Bye bye. There you go. There you go. You're a natural, Ragnar. You're a natural. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Ragnar. We're not helping you. No, we're not helping you. Angra de Ilia is a very special little spot and definitely meets our requirements for a sweet cruiser base. Torpedinho is keen to meet like-minded sailors, so if you're cruising the coast north of Recife, drop them a line on Facebook and tell them Della sent you. some suspicions we will go that way or that way our mystery adventure of the day was to take our new friend elder's boat out on a booze cruise to see some local sites but first we need to get her up and running maybe we wait a little bit are you taking pictures of you little creeper fishing boats no you're really taking pictures of the couple making out on the beach I just got my tool bag, all my <laughs> treasures in it. And we'll just swap yeah. out this battery. Oh, that's loose too. Yeah. But what is interesting is that they do, like they lay the net down and then they go like up and then they try to scare the fish down into the net. But they do the exact same technique all over the world, like we've seen the same Madagascar everywhere. It's a worldwide known trick. <laughs> I 
was the easy one. All clear. Elder used to work at a ship salvage yard in Recife and pieced his pirate boat together from scrap. The hull was built in England in 1946, and the engine is from who knows where. Driving this boat is kind of like driving a car. So it has a steering wheel. This is the clutch. So if you want, so if you want to go into neutral, you basically pull in the clutch. Now you're in, now you're in neutral. If you want to go back into gear, you do the clutch forward, and then you let the clutch out nice and slowly. I think we're walking up the hill to the town. On the top of the hill, it looks like a pretty sweet church and stuff. So, what can you see, Brady? Film this chicken slow mo. Are you filming slow mo chickens? Mm hmm. The colonial history of this area dates back to the 16th century. Wow. Wow, this place is old. I always feel like you have to whisper, whisper when you're inside of churches. I don't know why. This church was originally a French fort and is one of many in the area competing for the title of oldest church in Brazil. <laughs> Ooh, there's a big spider right there. Look at that bell. Made out of like solid brass from 1865. Whoa, cool. Hey, senor. What are you doing up there? We pulled up to the fort. I think it's a Dutch fort. I don't know what year it was built. I don't know anything else about it, but we're... I think we're gonna go check it out. Tell us some facts, bro. Uh, this fort was originally built in 1631 by the Dutch. And uh, obviously to protect the entrance of the harbor or the canal. It's like a quadrangle, like a misshaped square. Quadrangle. And it had a bunch of cannons. In 1654, the Portuguese came in and basically kicked the ass of the Dutch. They destroyed the fort. The Portuguese then rebuilt it, put uh, the crest of the Kingdom of Portugal on the entrance. Reconstruction began in 1696, and in 1745, the fort had 26 iron cannons, three bronze cannons and it was well provided with war material. So what's the plan? We're going for a ride. We're gonna get in this thing? I think so. The locals here drive these sweet vintage V-Dub vans, and we jumped in one to go check out some local vibes. Alex like a happy photographer girl. What are you getting there, Blue? I don't know. I've honestly never really been that inspired to shoot portraits of people before Brazil, but now I'm I don't know, it's my new thing that I'm really liking shooting. To get something good. Oh, I got a major Papa Grub photo. Oh, <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Here's a small museum um, to Lia of Itamaracá. Itamaracá is this island, and he creates the, the dancing, is called uh, Ciranda, and this sound is this dancing is very famous on the island. It's created here. Can you do the dance to it? Yeah. No. no. Petrolina, de um Petrolina, it's Petrolina, it's um artesão, it's de um artesão de Petrolina. It's a dick gun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. Heads to up. <laughs> hey. <laughs> if you smile, you like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
With our little history and cultural taste complete, we decided to do what we do best. Head to the beach, cool off, and drink some cerveja gelada. The entire area around the river bar is really shallow. In fact, when the tide goes down, these natural swimming pools form, and they're the best place to cool off and enjoy a few cold ones. So we just hopped back on the boat and cruised over to this little sandbar area. And it's really cool, you can walk out here like all the way to the end of the sandbar. It's beautiful, beautiful clear water. I think that's worthy of a, a snapshot there, look at that, it's so cool. The days flew by, and our time spent at Torpedino's Yacht Club was awesome. Just having space to spread out and act like landlubbers for a bit was perfect. What are you pirates up to over here? Rigging up an outdoor movie night. Whoa, look at this living room. We decided if we ever build a Delos compound of our own, it would be modeled after this place. The time has come. Yeah, we're leaving our compound, Kaza. Sad. In most yacht clubs you'll see sailing around, usually people put like something from the boat if they enjoy their time, like a flag or a banner or Perfect. something. So we thought we would start the, the tradition with your yacht club here. And this is a piece of our, uh, our old ballooner, our old spinnaker from Delos that we blew up in Madagascar. And we've all signed it for you and uh, we give it to you to start the tradition at your new yacht club. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The best little torpedo oh, in the world. Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much. Okay. okay, now we sail. Torpedino, what a legend. He even gave us these cool new hats. An elder gave this one to Bri. Hello. So now we look super cool. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Up next, we set sail for Fernando de Noronha the most exotic island in all of Brazil. Okay, go! I'm going on the wrong throat. The wrong throat. <laughs> like it? So the idea is that you make yourself look like you're climbing the coconut <laughs> yeah, tree, but you're standing like you're on the Yeah, it looks like you're climbing. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. Oh wait, you need your beer. Yeah, I don't know if I can hold on to this with one hand. Up. Well, uh, just stand it. stand on one leg. Nobody will know. <laughs> How's that taste? Get right? out of my coconut! Yes, sir. Weirdo. <laughs> Ragnar just made me some sort of a death o nut here full of vodka. <laughs> oh, look it. It not that much. Give it a sip. Okay, great. This is a. Is this yours? Yeah, but it's not vodka. <laughs> this is my vodka. <laughs> what? No wonder why you guys are all drunk. <laughs> 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 You know it's strong if that's Brian's reaction. It's not that bad. It's coming from the Swede. This, this is the... Uh, Look this at this guy walking around with a mostly <laughs> empty vodka bottle. You know this that is, bad. 